Good afternoon. Welcome to Jim Lindley's World of Weather. I clicked on to long range weather forecast discussion for October 26th through November 7th. October 30th to 30th, miles of good agreement here with depicting a trough or upper lower here near the Aleutians. We have another trough here over the eastern U.S. And we have positive height anomalies here across the west central U.S. Positive height anomalies here. Now, um, we're going to go, uh, this is GFS, and we'll go forward in time and see the, the pattern really developed here, see? And we're looking at the rest of the models. They're in good agreement. So uh, we're going to look at another system. This is uh, concerning the um, potential East Coast storm over the weekend. <clears throat> and um, the system uh, for, will depend upon uh, the Pacific of multiple smaller scale short waves. The operational models have yet to lock in onto specifics. And a notable longer trend is a slightly faster progression of the overall upper trough. Now locations from the central Appalachians, the Middle Atlantic to New England still face potential for significant precipitation totals from the storm tracking near the east coast. The tracking timing will influence the precise amounts as well as where the wintry precipitation will occur over some inland areas and higher elevations. So we're going to look here. This is, um, we're going to start here. And a lot of it has to do with energy from Hurricane Willa. And we'll go through there. This is GFS. Wonderful. And they're not, we'll, we'll see what happens. Okay, we're going to start here with, with, um, with Willa. You can see Willa here. A little bit of it. And then translate its energy here across um, uh, into the southwest and we'll have a low here developing here in the Gulf of Mexico and then this will track up and will bring heavy rainfall to the weekend but we're starting the GFS and we'll watch the system you can see right down here is the low here developing on the Gulf Coast and you see it starts to get organized then we're at Friday, and you can see now here's the low off the southeast coast. And then you can see it tracks up. Now this is GFS that brings it very close inland. The models before were trending closer, uh, farther out to sea. Now you can see here, here's the 540 line, but uh, it's up around here. But you can still see a mixture of precipitation across this area. And this would be caused by dynamic cooling. This would be mixed precipitation. This is Sunday. And then you can see uh, we go into month. Uh, this is 2 p.m. Sunday. Now we have rain here, and then we have mixed precipitation snow thrown back here across the Great Lakes and parts of New England. So that's the GFS, and we'll look at the European. Here's a storm wrapping up here or developing over the southeast coast. And this one might be, it's similar, maybe slightly more to the east. But it's not, doesn't bring that much snow to uh, New England. So I have to watch on that. But then there'll be heavier rainfall here. You see the heavier, the darker greens will be heavier. This here is heavy rain at Sunday. I mean, Saturday. And then we'll go into Sunday. You can see um, the brighter yellows and oranges. That's heavier in GFS. And then we look at the European. European is not as strong. And in the Northwest, we'll have a couple of um, frontal systems that will bring episodes of precipitation in Northwest and Northern Rockies with the highest amounts favored in the windward facing terrain. Okay, October 29th through November 2nd. October 29th. The flow remains generally unchanged. We have our positive height anomalies here, trough here. This is indicative of a negative NAO. We still have our trough here and a ridge across this region. The models are good agreement. 
So for this forecast period, I am forecasting above normal temperatures here, forecasting temperature anomalies of 6 to 12 degrees above normal, and then we have below normal temperatures here with the anomalies of 6 degrees below normal. For precipitation, calling for below normal precipitation for the west, for the Rockies, and for the plains, and the probability of occurrence is 35 to 45 percent. Also below normal precipitation for the southeast. And then we'll have above normal precipitation here. And the probability of occurrence is 45 to 55 percent. Now look at the period for November 3rd to the 7th. And now we have differences. This is GFS. It kind of maintains the um, negative the positive height anomalies here and here. And we still have a trough here in the east. But now if you look at its, let's see, if you look at its, um, its ensembles, especially when we get to later in the period, it kind of moves the, sh the trough to the west, across the west central states. See, if we look here, this is um, next Tuesday. So does the other miles of the European kind of moves it back to the um, into the west still have a ridge here and above normal heights here along the east coast so the temperature forecast will reflect that for this forecast period on forecast above normal temperatures here and for areas east of the Mississippi River and forecast anomalies of two degrees I'm forecasting numbers of two to four degrees above normal and then below normal temperatures here where the trough will be and I'm forecasting numbers of four degrees below normal for precipitation. I'm calling for above normal precipitation here and for the Mississippi Valley, the Midwest, the Mid-Atlantic and the Northeast. And the probability of occurrence is 45%. And then I have below normal precipitation forecast for the Southeast. Probability of occurrence is 35%. So that's the long range weather forecast discussion for October 26th through November 7th. Thanks for coming to Jim Unley's World of Weather and have a good day.